The History of Vincent Van Gogh Dive into the life of Vincent Van Gogh, an artist whose legacy transcends time. Discover how, through his struggle and genius, he transformed pain into masterpieces that resonate to this day. A brief but profound journey through the life of a man who painted with his heart, leaving an indelible mark on art and the world. Chapter 1. The First Brushes Vincent van Gogh's childhood was marked by austerity and religious devotion, as he was the eldest of six siblings in a family of strict Dutch tradition. From an early age, Vincent displayed a melancholic temperament and a deep sensitivity to his surroundings, traits that would significantly influence his future work. Although his education was not specifically focused on art, visits to museums and the contemplation of illustrations in family books sowed in him an early admiration for beauty and aesthetic expression. In his adolescence, Vincent began working at the art trading company Goupil and C, thanks to the influence of an uncle. This job took him to live in London and Paris, where he had the opportunity to visit galleries and museums, and immerse himself in the world of European art. Although he initially did not dedicate himself to artistic creation, these experiences broadened his cultural horizons and planted the seed of his passion for art. During this period, Vincent developed a deep love for literature and music, complementing his growing interest in painting and drawing. However, Art was not Vincent's only interest during these years. He experimented with various vocations, including that of an art dealer, teacher, and bookseller, without finding satisfaction in any. Despite these failures, Vincent maintained a deep need for expression and a search for purpose, which would eventually lead him to dedicate himself fully to art. His correspondence from the time reflects a deep reflection on religion, ethics, and human nature themes that would influence his later work. The real turning point in Vincent's life occurred after his dismissal from Goupil and C. This event plunged him into a deep personal and spiritual crisis, during which he turned to religion and evangelization, trying to find new meaning in his life. This search for purpose led him to travel to Belgium, where he unsuccessfully tried to become a pastor. Although this period was marked by discouragement and loneliness, it was crucial for his later artistic development. In this time of introspection and spiritual search, Vincent began to draw, capturing scenes of everyday life and the rural landscape around him, laying the foundations for his future career as an artist. Vincent's transition to art was not sudden, but the result of a long process of personal search and spiritual exploration. His early work experiences and early exposure to the world of art provided him with a foundation on which to build his unique vision of the world, while his struggle to find a vocation reflects the depth of his commitment to authenticity and personal expression. Although these early years were filled with uncertainty, they were also essential in shaping the artist Vincent would eventually become. Chapter 2. Searching for a Vocation after his failed attempts to find a vocation in art trading and religion, Vincent van Gogh found himself at a vital crossroads. Disillusionment and failure marked this stage of his life, deepening his personal and spiritual crisis. However, it was precisely this search for purpose that eventually led him to his true passion, art. Driven by a tireless desire for expression and communication, Vincent began to draw and paint more seriously using art to explore and make sense of his tumultuous inferiority. Vincent dedicated himself to self-study, absorbing all he could from art books and copying works from other artists. This stage of formation was essential for the development of his technique and style. Despite the lack of formal recognition, Vincent fully committed himself to his new vocation, showing a dedication and fervor that made up for his initial lack of training. In this period, he began experimenting with different materials and techniques, developing a deep appreciation for texture and color. The influence of his brother Theo was crucial during this phase of search and experimentation. Theo, who worked in art trading, financially supported Vincent, allowing him to dedicate himself entirely to his art. The relationship between the brothers greatly strengthened during this time, with Theo becoming Vincent's main confidant and critic. Through extensive correspondence, 
Vincent shared his reflections on art, life, and his personal struggle, establishing a dialogue that would be vital for his artistic development. As Vincent explored his vocation, he also began to forge his identity as an artist. He moved away from conventional themes and traditional techniques, seeking to capture the essence of his surroundings and his emotions in a more authentic and personal way. His interest in society's outcasts, peasants, and workers, reflected his desire to connect with humanity in its most pure and vulnerable form. This fascination with everyday life and the darker aspects of human existence would become a recurring theme in his work. Vincent's decision to dedicate himself to art was more than a career choice. It was an act of faith in his vision and in the power of art to communicate deep truths about life and the human condition. Despite the challenges and the initial lack of recognition, his unwavering determination and commitment to authenticity guided him through this stage of uncertainty. Vincent sought not only to find his place in the world of art, but also to understand himself and his place in the world. This period of introspection and experimentation laid the groundwork for the extraordinary artistic career that was to come, marking the beginning of his journey towards genius. Chapter 3. The First Strokes of Genius With his newly found vocation and the firm determination to forge his path in the world of art, Vincent van Gogh began a period of intense creative production. He immersed himself in the study of the character and essence of rural life in the Netherlands, focusing on landscapes, everyday scenes, and portraits of peasants. His work from this time on reflects a deep empathy for his subjects, capturing the rawness and authenticity of their lives with moving sincerity. The choice of dark and somber themes, along with his use of earthy colors, reveals an almost spiritual approach to art seeking to express truth and beauty in the simplicity and harshness of human existence. During this stage, Vincent developed a characteristic technique that stood out for its emotional intensity and expressive texture. Despite his lack of formal academic training, he experimented with the handling of light and shadow, as well as with the application of paint, creating works that conveyed a strong sense of atmosphere and emotion. His series of drawings and paintings of peasants, such as, the potato eaters, are among the most emblematic of this period, demonstrating his ability to portray the humanity of his subjects with depth and compassion. This was also a time of great personal development for Vincent, who, through his art, began to explore and understand his own inner struggles. The intensity of his work reflected his passion and personal torment, turning his creative process into a form of therapy and self-exploration. Despite facing rejection and misunderstanding from his family and critics, Vincent remained true to his vision, firmly believing in the importance of art to express the deepest truths of the human spirit. The relationship between Vincent and Theo strengthened even more during this period, with Theo providing not only financial support but also emotional support. Vincent's letters to Theo from this time reveal his reflections on the nature of art, his view of the world, and his personal struggles. Theo became Vincent's main supporter, encouraging him to persevere despite the difficulties and recognizing the unique value of his work, even when others did not. This formative period culminated with Vincent's decision to move to Paris, seeking new experiences and the opportunity to study and learn from other artists. The transition to Paris marked the beginning of a new phase in his career, introducing him to the vibrant world of Impressionism and Post-Impressionism which would have a profound impact on his style and technique. Vincent's dedication to his art during these early years was a testament to his tireless search for beauty and truth, laying the groundwork for the innovations that would characterize his most famous works. Chapter 4. Paris, The Transformation Vincent van Gogh's arrival in Paris in 1886 marked a decisive turning point in his artistic career and personal life. The city, with its bustling art scene and air of cultural renewal, offered Vincent a vast new world of possibilities and perspectives. Here, he immersed himself in the study of the latest artistic trends, coming into contact with the Impressionists and Post-Impressionists, whose innovative techniques and use of color would profoundly transform his approach to art. Living with his brother Theo, 
Vincent had the opportunity to interact with other influential artists of the time, such as Paul Gauguin, Camille Pissarro, and Georges Seurat. The influence of these encounters is evident in the remarkable change experienced by his palette, moving from the somber earthy tones of his early works to brighter and more vibrant colors. The adoption of pointillism and impressionism enriched his technique and allowed him to explore new ways of capturing light and movement, aspects that would become central in his later work. This period in Paris was also marked by intense experimentation. Vincent explored the possibilities of color with passion, using bold hues and contrasts to express emotions and atmospheres. The influence of Japanese prints, which he admired for their clarity, simplicity, and compositional elegance, was particularly significant. This fascination with Japanese art was reflected in his adoption of techniques such as clear outlining and the use of flattened perspectives, adding a new dimension to his artistic expression. The Parisian experience was, however, also a period of great personal challenges for Vincent. The city, with its frenetic pace and competitive environment, often exacerbated his emotional fragility. Despite this, Paris was a crucial laboratory for his creativity, pushing him to surpass his limits and consolidate his identity as an artist. The works he created during this time reflect a growing confidence in his unique vision, marking the definitive abandonment of any attempt to adhere to established artistic conventions. His time in Paris culminated with the decision to seek a quieter and brighter environment, leading him to move to the south of France. This search for purer light and a more intimate connection with nature marked the beginning of the most productive and emotionally intense phase of his career. Paris, with all its contradictions, was the catalyst that allowed Vincent to unleash his full potential as an artist, laying the foundations for the masterpieces he would create in the coming years. The city not only transformed his art, it also forged in him a resilience and determination that would accompany him for the rest of his life. Chapter 5. Arles, The Quest for Light In 1888, Vincent van Gogh moved to Arles, in the south of France, seeking the serenity and vibrant light he had longed for in Paris. This change of scenery marked the beginning of one of the most fruitful and transcendental periods of his career. In Arles, Vincent found inspiration in the luminous countryside, the fields of sunflowers, and rural life, elements that would become the protagonists of some of his most iconic works. The impact of the Arles environment on Vincent's work was immediate and profound. He embarked on a passionate exploration of color, using vivid and pure tones to capture the intensity of the Mediterranean light and the beauty of the landscape. This stage is characterized by an unprecedented artistic production, in which Vincent completed one painting after another with almost frenetic energy. The series of sunflowers, wheat fields, and views of the city and its surroundings testify to his extraordinary ability to transform the everyday into something sublime. During his stay in Arles, Vincent also undertook one of his most ambitious projects, the creation of the Yellow House, a workshop and home he hoped to share with other artists. This dream of forming a community of creators was briefly realized with the arrival of Paul Gauguin, with whom he maintained a complex relationship marked by mutual admiration and personal tensions. The cohabitation was difficult, culminating in the tragic episode in which Vincent cut off his ear, an act of despair that would mark the beginning of his mental health problems. Despite his growing personal difficulties, Vincent's work during this period was full of innovations. He experimented with new techniques and approaches, such as the use of expressive strokes and the application of paint directly from the tube, which added dynamism and texture to his compositions. The paintings from this time reflect not only his technical mastery but also his deep emotional connection with his surroundings. Vincent's stay in Arles was a period of unparalleled artistic achievements but also of intense personal challenges. His efforts to overcome loneliness, misunderstanding, and mental illness were reflected in the emotional depth and vibrant beauty of his work. Arles represented for Vincent a place of refuge and creativity, where his quest for light and color reached its maximum expression, leaving an artistic legacy that continues to inspire and move generations. 
Chapter 6. The Cut Ear and the Hospital. The period in Arles culminated in one of the most dramatic and well-known episodes of Vincent van Gogh's life, the incident of the cut ear. This event, which occurred in December 1888, was the harbinger of a profound mental crisis that would affect Vincent for the rest of his life. After a heated argument with Paul Gauguin, with whom he shared the so-called Yellow House, Vincent mutilated his left ear in an act of despair and anguish. This extreme gesture, far from being a mere episode of madness, reflected the depth of his psychological suffering and his intense need for expression and understanding. The incident led Vincent to the hospital in Arles, where he was treated for his wounds. However, his stay in the hospital was focused on physical recovery and marked the beginning of a series of internments due to his unstable mental health. Despite his condition, Vincent continued painting during his periods in the hospital, creating some of his most significant and revealing works. The series of self-portraits he made at this time offers an introspective look at his mood and inner struggle, using art to explore and communicate his personal torment. The severity of his mental situation led Vincent to voluntarily admit himself to the psychiatric hospital in St. Remy in May 1889. In an attempt to find peace and stability, he continued to dedicate himself to his art with astonishing intensity and productivity. Despite the restrictions of his environment and the recurrent episodes of his illness, Vincent produced a series of works that reflected both his profound suffering and his unbreakable hope and connection with the beauty of the outside world. During his stay in St. Remy, Vincent experimented with new techniques and themes, inspired by the hospital environment and the works of other artists he admired. His landscapes from this period, characterized by a vibrant use of color and undulating forms, testify to his struggle to capture the ephemeral essence of nature and his emotional state. Despite his personal challenges, Vincent maintained a deep faith in the power of art to heal and communicate, a belief that drove him to continue creating works of extraordinary beauty and emotional depth. Vincent's time in the hospital was not only a period of intense artistic creation but also of deep reflection on his life, his art, and his place in the world. Through his work and his correspondence, especially the letters to his brother Theo, he shared his most intimate thoughts and personal struggles, revealing the complexity of his character and the depth of his artistic vision. Despite moments of darkness, Vincent found in art a beacon of hope and a means to transcend his suffering leaving a legacy of works that continue to resonate for their humanity, beauty, and emotional power. Chapter 7. Wheat Fields Under Stormy Skies After leaving the psychiatric hospital in St. Remy in May 1890, Vincent van Gogh moved to auvers sur oise a picturesque village north of Paris. This change of environment, recommended by his brother Theo, was intended to place Vincent under the careful supervision of Dr. Paul Gachet, a physician interested in the arts and experienced in treating patients with mental health issues. The hope was that, in Auvers, Vincent would find a balance between his mental health and his relentless need to paint. In this final chapter of his life, Vincent experienced an extraordinary burst of creativity, producing more than 70 works in the past two months of his life. The landscapes of Auvers, with their extensive wheat fields, became the main subject of his work during this period. These paintings reflect both a deep connection with nature and a palpable sense of urgency and unrest. The wheat fields under stormy skies, in particular, symbolize Vincent's inner struggle, with the vibrant beauty of the landscape contrasting with the emotional turbulence that characterized his final days. Vincent's technique was further refined in Ovair, characterized by his bold use of color and his quick, emotive brushstrokes. The influence of the Impressionists in Japanese art remained evident, but his style had become unmistakably unique, marking the apex of his artistic expression. The paintings from this period, such as Wheatfield with Crows, considered by many to be one of his last and most powerful works, encapsulate Vincent's emotional intensity, his battle against despair, and his unbreakable appreciation for the beauty of the world. Vincent's relationship with Dr. Gachet during his stay in Auvers was complex. Although he initially found comfort in the company of the doctor and in his understanding of art as therapy, 
Over time he came to question the effectiveness of his treatment and his ability to truly understand his suffering. The famous painting of Vincent, portrait of Dr. Gachet, reflects this ambivalence, capturing the physician with an expression that mixes empathy with deep melancholy. This period in Auvers was, in many ways, the culmination of Vincent's quest for light and color, as well as his struggle to find peace and stability in his life. Despite brief moments of clarity and prodigious artistic production, his mental health continued to deteriorate. The tragedy of his genius lies in his inability to see his value and the impact his work would have on future generations. The paintings he created in Auvers sur Oise are a testament to his extraordinary ability to capture the essence of life and nature, works that continue to inspire awe and admiration for their emotional intensity and transcendent beauty. Chapter 8. The Letters to Theo. The letters Vincent van Gogh wrote to his brother Theo constitute one of the most emotive and revealing epistolary records in the art world. Through these letters, Vincent shared not only his personal struggles and aspirations but also his profound reflections on art, nature, and human existence. The correspondence between the Van Gogh brothers offers a unique window into Vincent's soul, revealing the complexity of his character and the immensity of his genius. The relationship between Vincent and Theo was exceptionally close, marked by deep trust and unwavering mutual support. Theo, more than just a benefactor, was Vincent's main emotional and financial support during his years of struggle and artistic search. Through his letters, Vincent expressed his gratitude, his doubts, and his successes and failures, creating an ongoing dialogue that lasted until the end of his life. These letters not only document Vincent's development as an artist but also illustrate the evolution of his thinking and his worldview. In his writings, Vincent reflected on loneliness, faith, beauty, and the purpose of life and art. He spoke of his admiration for nature and how it influenced his work, seeking to capture its essence through light and color. The letters also reveal his artistic influences, his admiration for the works of other painters, and his desire to contribute something significant to the art world. Vincent was aware of his marginal status in society and the art market of his time, but he remained true to his vision, driven by a nearly compulsive need to create. One of the most moving aspects of his correspondence is the brutal honesty with which Vincent addressed his mental health. He wrote about his crises, his hopes for recovery, and how art served him as a refuge and a form of healing. Despite the dark periods of despair, his letters are imbued with an unbreakable desire to overcome his difficulties and continue with his work. The letters to Theo are, in many ways, Vincent's spiritual legacy, complementing his artistic work. They provide direct testimony of his creative process, his internal struggles, and his inexhaustible passion for art. Through these pages, Vincent reveals himself as a deeply sensitive and thoughtful human being, whose only desire was to find a way to communicate the intensity of his life experience through his art. They are a powerful reminder that, behind each work of Vincent, there was a man desperately seeking to understand and be understood, a man who, through his art and his words, sought to connect with something larger than himself. Chapter 9 the decline of a bright sun. The final days of Vincent van Gogh encapsulate the intensity and tragedy that marked his life. On July 27, 1890, in the fields of auvers sur oise Vincent shot himself in the chest, an act of despair that reflected his constant struggle against mental illness and his feeling of isolation. Despite the severity of his wound, he managed to return to the auberge Reveau, where he had been living, and was found in his room. Vincent was attended by doctors, but he refused further treatment, saying he wanted to die. Two days later, on July 29, he died in the arms of his brother Theo, who had rushed to his side after receiving the news of his suicide attempt. Vincent's death was the tragic end of a life marked by an unconditional passion for art, constant struggle with depression, and longing for recognition that he rarely received in life. His last words to Theo, the sadness will last forever, are a somber echo of the struggles he faced throughout his life, 
reflecting both his despair and his deep sense of connection with human pain. The news of his death shocked the Parisian art community and the few admirers he had gained during his lifetime. The lack of widespread recognition in life contrasted sharply with the deep imprint he would leave on subsequent art. Vincent's funeral, although intimate, was a testament to the impact he had on those who knew him personally. His works, adorning the room where his coffin lay, offered a vivid reminder of his genius and unique vision. The circumstances of his death have been the subject of speculation and analysis. Some scholars and biographers have hypothesized that the shooting could have been the result of an accident or even an act committed by someone else, although the most accepted theory remains that it was a suicide. Regardless of the exact events, what is indisputable is the profound void his departure left in the art world. Vincent's immediate legacy was safeguarded by Theo, who tragically passed away only six months after Vincent, weakened by syphilis and devastated by the loss of his brother. Theo's widow, Johanna van Gogh Bonger, played a crucial role in promoting Vincent's work, organizing exhibitions, and publishing his letters. It was through these efforts that the world began to recognize the genius of Vincent van Gogh, whose work has become one of the most celebrated and studied in art history. The tragic irony of his life and death is that only after his departure did his art find the recognition and admiration that Vincent so longed for in life. Chapter 10. Eternal Resonance the impact of Vincent van Gogh on art and contemporary culture transcends the posthumous recognition of his genius. He has deeply influenced generations of artists, becoming a symbol of passion, dedication, and the struggle for personal expression. More than a century after his death, Vincent remains a central figure in the narrative of modern art, a living testament to how an artist's vision can profoundly alter our perception of the world. Exhibitions of Van Gogh's works draw crowds in museums around the world, demonstrating a constant and growing interest in his life and art. His paintings, characterized by their vibrant color palette, bold and emotional brushstrokes, and emotive intensity, continue to capture the public's imagination and critical respect. The fascination with Van Gogh is not limited to his paintings. His life, marked by adversity, unrestrained creativity, and an incessant quest for beauty, has inspired books, films, and songs, cementing his status as a cultural icon. The correspondence between Vincent and his brother Theo has been an invaluable source of insight into his creative process, personal struggles, and artistic philosophy. These letters, revealing the complexity of his thought and the depth of his passion for art, have become an essential part of studying his work offering an intimate glimpse into the mind of one of the most influential artists in history. Van Gogh's legacy is also reflected in how he has influenced artists across all disciplines. His innovative approach to color, his ability to convey emotion through texture and form, and his bravery in exploring the depths of the human experience have inspired countless artists to follow in his footsteps, exploring new techniques and perspectives in their work. The Expressionist movement, in particular, owes much to Van Gogh's contributions, who, with his work, prefigured many of the ideas and techniques that would define this trend. The story of Vincent Van Gogh is a powerful reminder that art can be both a refuge and a way to confront our deepest battles. Through his life and work, Vincent teaches us that beauty can emerge from pain, and that art possesses a unique power to communicate, console, and connect. His eternal resonance lies not only in the works he left behind, but also in his ability to inspire us to seek light, even in the darkest moments. Vincent lives in modern art not only as a symbol of genius and passion, but as a perpetual reminder of the immense power of art to transform both the creator and the viewer.